accidentally brought along the night. Only one can bathe in the fountain. It will be hard enough to decide which of us it would be without adding another. Now, Sir Lovelace, as the night was known, observed that these were witches, and having no magic, nor anything that distinguished the non-magical man, he had no hope of beating the three women to the fountain. He therefore declared his intention of withdrawing outside the wall again. Faint heart, draw your sword, knight, and help us reach our goal. And so the three witches and the forlorn knight ventured forth into the enchanted garden, where their herbs, fruit, and flowers grew in abundance. Finally, they reached the foot of the hill on which the fountain stood. There, wrapped around the base of the hill, was a monstrous white worm, bloated and blind. At their approach, it turned a foul face upon them and uttered the following words. Try the vain might to move past the worm. The worm would not let them pass. And Ash, despairing, began to weep. The great worm placed his face upon hers and drank the tears from her cheeks. His thirst satisfied. The great worm slithered away and disappeared. The three witches and the knight began to climb the hill. Halfway up the steep slope, however, they came across words cut into the ground before them. The Sir Lovelace took out his only coin and placed it upon the grassy hillside, but it rolled away and was lost. The three witches and the knight continued to climb the hill, but though they walked for hours more, they advanced not a step. The summit came no nearer, and still the inscription lay in the earth before them. All were discouraged, except for Alfeda, who walked faster and harder than any of them. Courage, friends, and do not yield! She cried, wiping the sweat from her brow. As the drops fell glittering onto the earth, the inscription blocking their path vanished, and they found that they were able to move upward once more. With the removal of this second obstacle, they hurried toward the summit as fast as they could, until at last they glimpsed the fountain, glittering like crystal in the bower of flowers and trees. Before they could reach it, however, they came to a stream that ran around the hilltop, barring their way. There, in the depths of the clear water, lay a smooth stone bearing the words, Understand. Taking her wand, she drew from her mind all memories of happy times she had spent with her vanished lover and dropped them into the rushing water. The stream swept them away, and the three witches and the knight found they were able to pass at last onto the summit of the hill. The fountain shimmered before them, set in its turns and flowers, rarer and more beautiful than any they had yet seen. The sky burned ruby, and it was time to decide which of them would bathe. Before they could make their decision, however, frail Asher fell to the ground. Exhausted by her struggle to the summit, she was close to death. Alfeda hastened to pick all those herbs she thought most helpful and poured the potion into Asher's mouth. At once, Asher recovered from her sickness and was able to stand. I am cured. I have no need of the fountain. Let Alfeda be. But Alfeda protested. If I can cure this disease, I shall learn full of the plenty. Let Marta be. Sir Luckless bowed and gestured a martyr to the fountain, but she shook her head. The stream had washed away all regret for her past lover. Good sir, you must be as a reward for all your chivalry. So the night claimed forth in the last rays of the setting sun and bathed in the fountain of fear. Astonished that he was chosen out of hundreds and giving him his incredible luck. As the sun fell below the horizon, Sir Lovelace emerged from the waters with the glory of his triumph upon him and flung himself in his rusted armor. Was the kindest, most beautiful woman he had ever beheld. Flush.
of them ever knew, suspected that the fountain's waters carried no enchantment at all. for our next show. We must be off. Until next time, thank you, everyone.